Right now we're in the middle of this wave of more inclusive holiday fair. I know, especially this year, in addition to Dashing in September, this Hulu's Happiest Season, Lifetime Hallmark, both have gay rom-coms as well. Just how does it feel for each of you to be part of this wave? It feels amazing. It, it does feel like a, a bit of a revolution. And uh, it, it's, al it, it's always so good to be at the front, forefront of something that hasn't been done before. And uh, yeah, the other movies are delightful too. I, I watch them. I mean, I watch the ones that are out and they're so <laughs> lovely. And I'm really glad to be in that company and to be opening the conversation to families because this is the type of movie that will be watched at home with your mom and your dad and your grandma. And, and it's a normal thing to watch. Mm -hmm. And it would be lovely that that's the case. Peter, yeah, I add. agree. And tell me if my um, my internet ever, you know, wavers in and out to repeat <laughs> myself because okay. I'm in the mouth and I don't have the best uh, reception. But um, <laughs> first of all, I think, you know, we discussed it when we first got to Utah together that we were so blessed to be working during a pandemic. Like mm -hmm. I was shocked that I would have any work at all this year. So not only to be part of a show that we were able to accomplish during the pandemic, but also a show that is so, so unique and so important, especially during this time where there was a lot of division, there was a lot of um, uncertainty. Mm -hmm. I think it couldn't have come at a better time. <clears throat> and now and yeah, I'm, I'm really pleased to be part I of it. Say for Peter, especially, I know you've done a lot of these, these holiday movies, you know, you've been the leading man in them for a lot of the straight holiday films. Just yeah. how different was this for you? If it even was. Uh, I've told this story before, but <laughs> I, you know, this is my fifth holiday movie and I'm always paired with a beautiful blonde girl who doesn't really love Christmas and is overworked and has to return home. And she meets, you know, a handsome guy. And this time I got to play the beautiful blonde girl. <laughs> and, uh, and it was, it was so much fun. It was a lot of fun. Um, I think that, uh, we, we, we tried to make it as honest and authentic as possible while still maintaining all of the different tropes <laughs> of rom-coms and holiday holiday shows that we all have like learned to love. We love the formula of holiday mm -hmm. movies. I think that's what we, we, we wait for every year is that comfort of knowing what to expect at the end, the beautiful, happy ending and the, the two people that were unlikely lovers kissing. Uh, so while, and I think Jake, our, our director, our producer and our writer, Jake, I think he did such a good job of giving people what they wanted and what we have come to expect in a holiday movie while also completely turning it on its head. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you talk a little bit about, you know, there are these tropes in holiday films, but one thing that I especially liked about this one, when it comes to tropes for gay films is that coming out wasn't the main catalyst for it. You know, yes. both that both characters were both out already. That wasn't like this big secret that was gonna get exposed in the third act. I'm curious if either of you wanna to speak to that aspect of the film as well, just cause personally, I found that to be a, a great, great part of it. Yeah, yeah, it was refreshing <laughs> when I first read it too. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, no, no. Okay. Um. Yeah, it's a it's a breath of fresh air because uh, uh, it is true. You know, there's usually there's usually some self loathing in gay themed movies, and in this one there there isn't. Uh, and all the characters around them really are like rooting for them to, 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 to get together and stuff. And that, that in itself is so sweet. Even the town, you know, they get to go to, to a um, saloon and dance mm -hmm. and, you know, they're dancing side by side. And it's, um, it is really lovely to, to see in a sort of, uh, what do you call it? In a, like a traditional film, because it, it is yeah. a traditional film. Uh, but like you say, um, Peter, I think Jake, the director, turned turn it on its head because it's actually quite um, quite quite a subtle film uh, for a Christmas movie. <laughs> yeah, uh, it doesn't scream at you with the music and the thing. It's like oh, you have to feel this way. You know, it's kind of like it drives the audience through. And um, I just finished watching watching it now, actually. <laughs> And I was. I, 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 I watched it. JP, you haven't watched it. 
It's really it's man a screener. <laughs> so I'm pleasantly, you know, I'm pleasantly proud to be part of it. I like that the character, my character, he is um he's not picture perfect. He's he's difficult. There's times that he like really is I think a difficult person. Um and and in I think most cases when portraying uh a gay difficult person it like and that's become a trope in itself you know like mm -hmm. a sassy gay best friend <laughs> um uh it's it's because of some kind of you know internal struggles or uh internalized homophobia or whatever and that that was never really the, the case with him he's just like yeah. kind of a bit of a rich snob <laughs> that has to come back and leave the city and is reminded of all the things that are actually important that have nothing to do with his life before. In this movie, you know, Heath's go-to Christmas film is It's a Wonderful Life. I'm wondering if there are films you find yourself re-watching every year around this time. I think for me is, uh, is Love Actually. Mm. Yeah. Four Weddings and a Funeral. I mean, hello. Uh -huh. <laughs> hey, I, love actually. I love Gremlins. <laughs> the last Christmas movie. I also love, I don't know if you've ever seen it, but it, it came in a Happy Meal box when I was a kid at McDonald's and <laughs> it became just like the, we had to watch it on Christmas Day every single year. And it's the Drew Barrymore Babes in Toyland. Babes in Toyland. <laughs> With Keanu Reeves and Drew Barrymore. Yep. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a weird one. one. <laughs> oh, it's a weird one. It gives Dolly Parton's new movie a run for its money. <laughs> and that one's fun, fun too. <laughs> <laughs> now um obviously this is probably a longer conversation than we have time for but representation in hollywood you know there's obviously still a lot of blind spots gray areas especially when it comes to queer actors queer roles i know kristen stewart just did an interview where she even talked you know about whether she feels gay actors should play gay roles or if they, they should just be more roles available for everyone across the board Wentworth Miller said he's only going to do gay roles going forward. I'm just curious where you guys stand on the issue or, you know, what do you think can be done to maybe further representation in Hollywood? Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, though, I, I've played straight pretty much all of my career. Yeah. And uh, we both have. It was kind of like a, yeah, it was kind of like a really nice change to be in playing this role. I might have shed a tear, not because I was, I mean, yes, I was in, into the movie, but but the moment where him and I are dancing together and, and you know, we hug, for some reason that got me, because I've never <laughs> seen myself do that on screen. Mm. Uh, and so it was actually really, really cathartic for, for me as an actor to, to be doing that. Having said that, I, Yes, I welcome all kinds of gay roles, whatever they, they may be in, in my life. Uh, but I also believe that we as actors come into this job and this profession because we like experiencing other people's experiences, not just our mm. own. Yeah. So I do believe that straight actors play gay and gay actors play straight and gay actors play, play gay. You know, I, I think if we start sort of narrowing down casting to exactly what you are. It just means that I will always be able to play a Latin guy who's gay, da, 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 you know what I mean? And, yeah. and, and uh, I mean, when you, when you, theater is all about pretending and you know, you, you want to be able to, uh, I mean, look at Mel Street. <laughs> uh, we all want that, so. So I think, you know, it would be a shame to start narrowing down casting because of your, you know, preference or your yeah. right. physical role. Yeah, I, I think I agree very much with you. I I, um, I became an actor because I wanted to, t to play someone else. I wanted to tell stories and I wanted to fall into other lives. And, you know, when people, uh, there were there were times where I thought, maybe I should get into like hosting or maybe I should get into mm -hmm. some kind of other. And now with Instagram, we have so many people that represent themselves as personalities. I have no interest in playing <laughs> myself or being yeah. a personality. 
it's always been finding the weird and interesting and humanity in someone else's story, whether that is gay, straight, a merman, whatever, <laughs> you know, like that, that, that's, that's what I think I've always, um, that's what always attracted me to the career. And I, uh, I, yeah, I hope that no one feels pigeonholed as an actor to play one thing or another.